everyone and welcome to our writer and dramaturg Zoom. My name is Emily Morvan and I'm one of our dramaturgs. Hi, I'm Emily Komorowski. I'm one of our writers and I wrote for Isla, Thomas, and Maeve. Hi, my name is Isabel Zuniga and I'm one of our writers and I wrote for Isaac. Hi, I'm Mackenzie Gunter, but I also go by Clay. I wrote Poppy and Sarah. Hi, I'm Luke Spatero, I'm one of the writers and I wrote Nellie and Rose. So our writers were able to um, accomplish so much throughout this entire process. I mean, where do you even begin with writing an entire movie from scratch? Panic. Um, so really, we got a lot of our inspiration from the ideas that were pitched because this was first like in between two different ideas for what we're going to do as our device show. And there was a lot of ideas pitched for the Tenement stories. So we looked at those and then we got inspiration from that. And we had many, many ideas. Many, many were cut, but we have something that in the end came together and congealed after a long time. Yeah, the dramaturgs, for those of you who don't know, are in charge of all the research for the entire show. And so starting out, it was very overwhelming because we knew we were doing tenements, but the tenements were around for a very long period of time. And so trying to figure out like what type of, what era in history we were gonna research. And we were just looking into like all of American history in the early 1900s. And so, yeah, it was definitely, it's definitely interesting starting the process. What is a dramaturg? So the dramaturgs were in charge of a lot of the research, but we also worked hands like um, with a lot of the technicians and just everybody to make sure we maintain historical accuracy throughout every facet of our show. And we also ended up moving over to props and we, we dabbled in a lot of things and we worked with everybody. And so we did a, we did a lot of stuff throughout the show. So Good what was each of y'all's favorite scene and why? So I think one of my favorite scenes was the one between Isla and Maeve, just because it really shows the dynamic that they have and how it's really special because Isla has to look out for her little sister single-handedly because their parents aren't with them. And I think that it's just something really heartwarming to see on screen. I personally just liked any scenes where Maeve had any banter with anybody ever, like like a scene, scene two, scene 8.5, scene seven, just all the different moments where she would just go back and forth. Scene, oh. Scene three, that one, mm, warms my heart. I personally, maybe a little bit of bias, but I like scene one a lot. It was, it went through a lot of changes. A lot of lines were cut, a lot of lines were added. Looked very different at the end than what it did at the beginning. But I really like the banter between Rose, Nellie, Maeve, just their like work his conversation, just the quippy sort of lines. Yeah. I'm also a little biased. Um, my favorite was scene eight. It, I, that was the one that I wrote pretty much solely on my own. Um, and I really like it just because it's a really, I want to say intense, but not really. It's very impactful, very emotional. It really shows the growth and development of the relationship between a father and a son. And I just really enjoyed that. Yeah. So this entire process was filled with unknowns. <laughs> and so we went through a lot of different, you know, different ways we were going to end up coming up with a, an end product. At one point, we thought we'd maybe be able to do this live. And at one point, actors were going to film in their homes. And then we ended up going with doing it in person as like a movie. So what was it like not knowing if you're writing for a play or a movie and like all of that for the writing team? Well, this is actually like one of the first like big scripts I've ever written. But I'm also very used to the, I guess, format of live theater. And so as we were writing, I would just like accidentally write things like for live theater. And then we would just look at it and we we're like, that's not gonna work. And so we just went through, it was a lot of like trial and error until we finally got to where it needed to be. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I was used to writing for the, for, for the screen rather than for plays. Um, I was actually, the way we knew that we were transitioning, we were officially gonna make this into it, um, a, a film's thing is we stopped saying we're writing a play we just said we're writing a movie. I go around bragging that I wrote a movie. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, that's really what it ended up being. So um, so for each of you, like y'all put so, so much work into this entire process. Our writers had so many really long days, really long nights writing this script. So what is it like after all this time to finally see your ideas come to life on screen? It's so weird. Like for some of these characters, I knew exactly who was going to be playing them. I knew exactly what was going to be. I basically, I wrote Maeve for Audrey. Like that was, I knew exactly what was going to happen with her. But like one day I just, I saw Piper coming out in Isla's costume. And I was like, what? I sprinted across the stage. I just looked at her like, you're 
You're a person. You were words on a page and now you're a per You are a human with emotions and a body and a soul and oh my God, this is absolutely baffling. You, how are you here? This must be a Goosebumps movie. Yeah, I did the same thing with Poppy. I saw Aaron walking in and I was like, okay, <laughs> there he is. But at the same time, it's like also a little unsatisfying and I don't want to sound negative towards it because I love how it turned out and I love where it like is, but it's kind of upsetting to see like how much was cut and like how much like the rest of the world isn't going to be able to see because there was so much like different, like I guess rights and drafts of it. It's great where it ended up, but it's like, I really miss where it was and I want everybody to know that's what it was. It's hard to explain, but I think you get the gist. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> so throughout the show, since it was a historical piece, maintaining historical accuracy is incredibly important. So how were y'all able to do that? How did you overcome that? Tell us a little bit about that process. Um, I want to begin by shouting out a good friend of mine, um, Professor Feely of McDaniels University. Um, I mean, I just Googled history professor, and he came up. We really needed credible sources, and he gave us a good amount of uh, information. We came across a lot of families who we could base our characters off of, the Levines, the Rogachevskis, and we did, we had a, one of the original drafts was basically around the characters, and it was very difficult because everyone was like, oh, can we have her die earlier? How about she moves to, I don't know, Tennessee? I'm like, we can't because she died of starvation three years ago. We can't have that. So we need, it was just really annoying to have to shape a play around uh, historical characters. What we ended up doing was shaping it on a historical event, which was the um, Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire. And it was just so much easier because we could have historically fictional characters and have them partake in an event that was historically based. Yeah. We were able to get a lot of really great sources from that professor and also the Tenement Museum offered just like a lot of information. We pulled, like we were able to um, find entire family stories and pull little things from that that we were able to incorporate into our show. And so, yeah, that was a really big thing for us. This entire thing actually came from one of our company members going to the Tenement mu Museum and being interested in their story like way pre-COVID. And um, so that's where this all came from. So that Tenement Museum is like really essential to our entire process throughout this entire show. So as Clay was saying earlier, the writers originally had a very long script, which means a lot of things had to be cut. So what is one thing that was cut from the show that each of you wish could have stayed? Mm -hmm. So I think that as you do the writing process, there's a lot of lines that come up that you just kind of fall in love with them just because they're silly or maybe they're just a little inside joke to you. So a lot of those got cut, but it's fine. And I also wrote for a character, his name was Abraham and he was meant to be the father of Isaac and Sarah. And I had a really fun time writing him because he, he was also kind of like in many ways the counterpart to Isaac because Isaac was like a teenage boy who was in love. And then Abraham, on the other hand, is like a father and he has responsibilities and duties. So I was kind of sad that his character had to be cut. I had a line that was uh, merely originally written as a joke. It was purely a joke. And I didn't expect that. And I was surprised when no one deleted it. And it was a joke by Nellie in the first scene that described uh, Isaac and Maeve's relationship as you two go together like potatoes and immigration. And I mean, it survived like all the way up to like the final cut and then it just got cut, which was really unfortunate, but it was just one of those lines that it was controversial, I guess. It was not unfortunate and needed to happen. There are some split feelings among our writing team about that line, but it, it ended up being cut in the end, yes. Um, unfortunately, my favorite line in the whole thing also got cut. It was also spoken by Nelly. It would have been in scene seven when, uh, when Thomas opens the door after having a reading lesson with Maeve and he sees Nelly standing there and she jokes, well, if it isn't the patriarchy and Thomas would not be amused. Unfortunately, it did not make the final cut. <laughs> oh, um, so scene eight, like my favorite scene. Um, uh, unfortunately, a lot of it had to be cut for time restrictions and I understand that, but it had a lot more development and growth to it. So a lot of people in the company know, but um, it was originally written for, I think Maeve and Sarah, 
and it was about Sarah being upset that she had lost her sense of voice and everything and she was being her political self uh, her progressive self um and I wrote it in like a fit of like anger and frustration over something and it just had a lot of development obviously whenever it switched over to Poppy and Thomas's little argument um we had to change a few of the words around from like voice to hands and then from there but you used to have a lot more development and it just built up a lot of things and it was just kind of disappointing to see the fact that like a lot of my working out that like frustration I had that day it was like not in the draft anymore but it was for time restrictions and it's understandable but it was just a lot more fulfilling to see it before yeah for sure and so a lot of you are used to writing alone and so what was it like to be thrown into this group with these people some of you guys didn't even know each other when you started this process and having to not only write an entire script from nothing but also like it over zoom because of covid what was like that whole process like what is y'all's relationships like explain that to me so i mean going into this i knew emily and barely like like Annie get you on third name like she did some stuff I didn't even know who she was um no offense the first three meetings were insanely awkward I mean no one super silent talk like you guys are gonna turn this stuff in eventually and I guess after a while we just I mean after you spend so much time working on a play about immigration with you know five random people you get to know each other pretty well and it was definitely as time went on, we started talking more and more collaboration. And it's just at the end, it was just like one cohesive group of just writing, I guess. We're best friends now. Like this is, I love these guys. We have group t-shirts. It's so cool. We're still working on the t-shirts, but um, it was good. So yeah, like Lucas said, like the first three meetings were like very stale and awkward. But um, after that, we just like, everything sort of eased off when we started to get to know each other and like I think what really helped is at the beginning of like each of the like writings the solely writing meetings is like we set aside 10 20 minutes just to like talk about our days to vent about like stuff that we needed to vent about and like we just got to know each other through that and I think that really helped us because like after learning so much about each other it really helped us anticipate like the feeling and the tone that the other person was writing with and I think that really helped with the script like being cohesive like any situation even if it's online and on zoom if you throw five people into a room they're eventually gonna start acting crazy and becoming friends yeah every single person in the company knows about the insane bond our writers have it's so awesome to see they all love each other so much and it's really great so throughout this process y'all were obviously writers but eventually after the script was done we became we began recording and so some of y'all went on to do other jobs so what did you do what did that look like so after the writing process was done, um, I was put on the set crew and, you know, I love working on set as is. And so um, I worked a lot with the set head at the beginning and we sat down and we kind of talked about how the set plans he had worked out with the writing and, or the, the show itself, I guess. And we sat down and we were like, okay, so maybe this scene was supposed to come off this way. Maybe this like wall or this like room is like moved over here. And so we had a lot of good breakthroughs in the first two days and it was really good to to sit down and talk about that or else it probably wouldn't have come across as well as it has um and then after we kind of like put up the flats and then like put furniture everywhere we decided okay we need to paint things and so i was in charge of a lot of the painting and so one thing we did was i spent three hours one day, like three straight hours painting the wall flats and then we looked at it we stepped back and we looked at it and we're like okay, that's not working. It looked way too 1970s for a 1910s play. Um, and so we painted over all of it. None of it was left. And then we, I sat down with some of the dramaturgs and we looked at like old wallpaper designs. And so I kind of like incorporated two together and like built like a stencil off of that. And we, I had a uh, help from one of our other company members and we sat there and we used these stencils to stencil the pattern on the flats and it took a long time but I think it was much better than before and so I was just really incorporated with the set crew after writing. Meanwhile I tried to do some set but I'm not physically built for it so I basically just kind of held some flats for clay for a little bit and occasionally moved some furniture around as my set crew experience 
because I actually migrated back to my home of Soundland. And it was great because I helped Daniel set up all the stuff, every floor mic and all that stuff. Um, I helped him uh, set up the board because we had a mobile board for sound. Uh, I was one of the boom operators, which really weird to be holding a pole up to people's faces like two inches away. It was very strange. Um, uh, currently, I actually am also helping Damien with the editing because as soon as this is over, I'm going to work on scene seven. And it was just generally nice because like the sound people, the lights people, the set people, we all kind of just formed a, we just formed a little family, you know? We were just sitting in the back in the dark, just sitting there occasionally playing Among Us, you know? It was, it was so cute. It was great. We all bonded together because there was the writing family and then we had our little tech family too. Yeah. The dramaturgs ended up after being dramaturgs. We continued doing that, but we also moved on to props because all of our historical knowledge and knowing, you know, what a lot of things looked like during the time period could really help with props, especially because the camera was so close to stuff. Like when we do um, straight plays, like, you know, actual live theater, we're allowed to kind of make props and they don't have to look great because the audience is like really far away. But when you have a camera right up on something, it's got to be accurate. And so the dramaturgs played a lot into that. And then I ended up also doing some slating for AV. And I think just throughout this entire process, a lot of people were hopping around and doing all sorts of things. And I think it really, you know, kind of helped us get closer. And yeah, it was a really great experience. This entire process has been so incredibly based off of um, collaboration. And I feel like our entire troupe has grown a lot closer through all of this because we had so many meetings that went over to like four or five hours just when we were like meeting as a group. And not only that, we would meet outside and there's just so much work and so much effort that went into this entire process. And so I really think that people came together and it's really awesome to see. And we're really hoping that the community loves our final product. So talking about that, after all of this, all this work, we've been doing this since June and finally now in October, the world gets to see it. What is one thing you want our audience to take away from seeing this amazing show? I think that it's really important that everyone remember that even though we're going through some difficult times and even like without COVID, you're always going to have little things like family problems or drama going on, grades and school getting stressful, but there's always hope and things are eventually going to get better and you can always hope for a brighter day. But, um... <laughs> I definitely think the short waist triangle factory when researching it uh, it was completely unexpected no one saw it coming it was just here one day gone the next pretty much obviously covid wasn't here for one day it's been here for a long long time and it was also unexpected and i think the ability to grow during those times of trial um i know personally i have grown a lot but as a community as a troop as just the theater program we've, we've grown immensely and i'm really proud of that and i really hope people are able to realize that I mean, we grow when the pressure's on, just. Yeah, for sure. And I think for so many people, art can be so therapeutic and it can be so, um, such a relief. And so I really hope that the community can take something away from that and kind of have this outlet and they can see like how we took all of the craziness that's going on and was able to channel it into something like this and create something that I think every single person in the company is really proud of, so. All right, well, thank you all so much for sitting down with me. This has been our Writers and Dramaturg Roundtable.